Hi guys, it is a windy, noisy day here in Florida. However, today is a good day because I have a fin style propulsion system for a kayak. Now when you get these things from the factory, one of the things you might want to do is loosen up these cables, the little retaining nuts that hold them down. They're a little stiff right out of the box. All you really need for that is a pair of needle nose because Regular pliers might have a hard time gripping some of these cables, but you grip that, use a 7 16 open end wrench, and loosen them up just a little bit. About a quarter turn each one. There's three on this side, three on the other side. And you'll find that this will be a lot looser. Now some of the noises that you're hearing there though, that's what today's video is about. Most of the noises you're hearing are the pedals, which arguably you will have your feet upon. If you're fluttering your drive system, you, you know what that noise is, right? That's that little pin right there. You see how that goes in and out? The idea is you can squeeze the base of this and change the position of the fins. If you're a tall guy and you need more leg room, that's how you would adjust your fins. And then you can squeeze it. And put them in the short person position. It's actually a little too close for me. The center position is pretty much where I keep this at all times. Yes, you have the ability to move these, which is nice. And you can tighten them up a little bit, but that makes it you know more difficult to move. And again, I don't really ever move this thing. What I do sometimes though is accidentally when I go to lift it out, it'll change position on me. And if they're not in the same holes, it's just not going to work correctly. So this is how I made it quieter and eliminated that. The tools I'm using today are very basic. You probably have most of these things. I have a 9 16 and a 7 16 ratchet, a couple pairs of pliers, a little 7 16 open end wrench, flathead screwdriver, there's electrical tape. For haste, I've got a, a drill driver here, and that has a Phillips head on it. You could use just a regular Phillips head. Now over here, you have acetone, which is awesome to have around the shop. Just like these things, plastic razor blades. These are really nice to have. And some lubricating spray. This is quick lube. It comes out thick and uh, goopy, and it's really nice for lubricating your high drive. Last but not least, I have some bolts. These I've gotten off of old Pelican kayaks. You can likely find them in the store. They're stainless steel. From the base of this 7 16 head to the end of the thread is inch and a half. There are two little washers and a nylon locking nut on the end of it. And what makes these kind of special is they come with these caps. I'm assuming you can find these somewhere. They're not necessary, but they make your installation look real nice. And they fit over the edge like that. These are the only really bits of hardware that you're going to need, aside from some electrical tape, to make this a little bit better in my opinion. The first thing I'm going to do today is try to make this a little quieter. You see how the thing comes in and out right there? That's going to make some noise. And unfortunately there's no way to really tighten that up aside from the hack that I'm about to show you. Here's your flathead screwdriver. There's that little orange cap on the end. There's an opening on the top. You pry that out, pry the bottom out, and you see, whoop, that's the end cap. And you just have to squeeze these with the screwdriver and it comes right out. And there's a 7 16 nut in there. That's where your little ratchet comes into play. This is one of those nylon locking nuts, so it's going to fight you until it's just about ready to come off. There you go. There's going to be a washer in there. And there is a little bungee here that holds it on. Me, I'm going to eliminate that. I'm just going to snip that off. Perhaps you'll see why in a little while. You can undo that knot and put it back if you like. So now here underneath the pedal, there's a rod and it, this is you know plastic on metal and it's making a little bit of noise so to eliminate that noise all i have to do is take some electrical tape wrap it around the base around maybe twice here 
and then work it out towards the handle. You remember when you were little and you had a baseball bat or something and you would wrap the handle of the baseball bat. This is the same premise. There you go. Slide this back on and it's going to give you a little bit of resistance. You can twist it on there. Now that pedal is going to stay in whatever position you put it in, which is actually kind of nice. You take your feet off the drive, you go about your business, you go to put your feet back on the drive and the pad is waiting for you in that position and that's really neat. Now all you got to do is put your washer and your nut back on. Snug that down, put your cap back in place, boom, and there you go. Now, that's a lot more quiet than that one. You notice that the strap is not on it. I don't really care for the strap, so I'm going to throw that away pretty much. I find that it gets in the way. If you want to keep it, of course, you can keep it. So now if you twist it like that, you can put boots on this or bare feet on the pad side and this is pretty much ready to go. Next, however, we're going to eliminate that noise right there. Yeah, that's a bit much. So in order to do that, I'm going to eliminate this spring right here and that pin and that's where it's kind of loose. This is very easy to do. There's a nut right there it's real tiny and over here there's a Phillips head and I'm gonna take that off just like this slide that out of there okay 9 16 takes the big bolt off that just slides right out of there There you go. You can take that spring-loaded thing off of there. I suggest putting all these bits and pieces back together in case you ever decide that you want to reuse this so you don't lose your parts. Put this away for safekeeping. Me, I'm probably not going to use it again. Now all you got to do is put this back in here, put the big bolt in it, and use one of these bolts in lieu of the spring-loaded thing. But first, I'm going to clean off this old sticker. It probably says something like, um, I don't know, uh, this is going to void your warranty if you do this or you know, it's going to warn you not to eat it or put it in your mouth or something or something about pinch points I think actually, but I can't read the sticker anymore. This is an old unit and I used it for the rental business so it's seen many many hours and has performed very well and has held up just fine. If you try to use a regular razor blade or any kind of metal sharp edged object on this, you're going to scrape up this black finish. This goes for the same if you're trying to take a sticker off of your truck or car or motorcycle or whatever. These little things are awesome. Stick that in there. You should probably have to do this right out of the box when you first get your unit. So this part you'll be familiar with. And the only difference now is that instead of the spring-loaded uh, adjuster here, you're going to use that inch and a half hex nut. And because I have the fins separated, I can get to the back side. This way you have more room in between the unit here for the bolts to pass each other as they go back and forth. Put your 
washer on there, and that goes through there, and that goes on there. And the nut, which is still under the cap, goes on there. Just snug that down. You might have to hold the head side of the bolt with a pair of pliers and just give it a little snugging. Same with the bigger bolt. You don't make them too tight. That can make the drive a little stiff. Just snug it and there you go. One little tip. If you're concerned about having to potentially move these while you're out on the water, you can get yourself some old cheapy crescent wrenches and backing this out while you're on the water and changing the position is probably easier done than tying on new leader and hooks and stuff. So there's no real concern there about this being a permanent fix to your problem. How about that? No more rattle, no more knocking around. And this thing is good to go and ready for a water test. There is one other thing, and that has to do with the fins. Going back and forth like that. With everything else quieter, you're gonna notice these noises a little bit more. Even though they're underwater and muffled a little bit by the sounds of the kayak cutting through the water and the still, probably gonna notice that. Now here there's a space in between the housing and the fin and you can see I can pull on it and it gets a little bit bigger that space and if you keep downward pressure on the fin as you go back and forth not so much noise if it's up against it so you can put a spacer in there and that'll stretch this plastic a little bit away from the other piece of plastic it's hitting and make it a little bit quieter as long as it doesn't impede the back and forth motion of the back side of the fin which is necessary for propulsion i'm curious what you guys think whether or not that's a good idea or bad but good or bad i'm going to do it right now taking the fins off is pretty easy there's a little nut and bolt right there i'm going to grip that and take the scoop off and with that part out I should be able to just slide the fin right off okay now because I had many of these units with my rental business I have a couple of them just kind of laying around these old fins what I am going to decide to do is cut off a little piece of this hard plastic and use it as a washer get a nice to have a uh, sharp knife be very careful if you're going to do something similar to this. There you go. I just cut off a little piece of this old fin. Again, you can use any kind of washers that you have laying around. They should work. I'm not really condoning this part. I know the other part works. This part here is, um, again, possibly going to rob you of a little performance. I haven't noticed it, but again, I'd like to hear your uh, comments. You engineers out there, let me know your thoughts on this. So yeah, there is that. That's gonna go on there. Essentially, that is gonna push this fin a little bit further away. Okay. Snugging this down with a hand driver. That's it. It does seem a little bit quieter now that this spacer is pulling on the fin. Just seems a little bit quieter. That is a significant improvement. This drive system is now almost ready for the water. The only thing to do is lubricate some of the friction points and that would be 
where the fins ride on this axle. So right here and there, this chain and there and there, this chain, there and there. Also where the cables touch plastic, I'm going to do that. And then on the inside, I'm going to do here, here, and this big axle here. And of course, I'm going to do this wheel. There's an axle there too. So there's three axles plus the cables, and I'm going to give them a squite with this. I've used a bunch of different products as long as they say lubricant. I've used WD-40 as well, which works initially, but it'll evaporate and draw out all the, the good stuff in there, all the lubricant. You want it to penetrate and stay in there and be water resistant. I'm going to be somewhat liberal with this. This will be a constant thing as you use this. Not only are you going to spray it down with fresh water when you come off the water, but you're also going to lubricate every once in a while. I find it pretty satisfying to put oil on my knife and other things that I use a lot that you want to stay uh, nice and limber. machine ready for the water and a lot quieter if you guys enjoy this kind of stuff check out my video where I, I put carpet on the kayak you can give a thanks or a comment below and or a like all that stuff kind of helps me out so all I want in return is that and for you guys to enjoy your time out there on the water with your high drives catch you later